give us a sweet. Hello, everybody. Hello, hello. What's happening? Marcus. It is Jamie and Marcus here, and we are in the car once again. So on the move. I have to make sure that this is actually on aroma time, not on Marcus's. Uh... Yep, there we okay. go. Okay. All right. I, got I thought it might have been from maybe one of our clients. Oh. Because we, <laughs> we, we, coach, we coach other restaurants. So we are, we're, we go into their, their business suite on our phones and check metrics and stuff. So before I was in other people's Facebook, I know other people's Facebook looking at metrics. Um, so I was just... Would have been weird if we were on another restaurant's <laughs> <laughs> Facebook Live. That would have been kind of funny, I guess. Yeah. But anyway, uh, Jamie and Marcus here. We are uh, live in the car. So, uh, you know, let's see. We have a lot to talk about. Yep. Um, uh, we were going to do this earlier, but it was pouring rain. And you would have heard the rain hitting the windshield in the car. So, But now, it's a little wet outside. Uh, we're near uh, Syracuse. Yes, we're we approaching are. Syracuse in about 15, 20 minutes on the way from Buffalo down backstate to Ellenville. Yes, for those of you who have been following us, uh, we've had a busy, busy week. Uh, we were in Mexico in wine country in Baja, California. Yep. Uh, then we, um, we, had, we had flown into San Diego, drove down. Exactly one week ago. Exactly one week ago. We were landing, getting a rental car and on a mission to go to Mexico. And so we are, um, we are now on our way back from Buffalo. So we literally flew into Newark and drove almost six hours north to Buffalo. Uh, to watch Justin pitch two innings in a inter-squad uh, game. So we're kind of crazy. So uh, for those of you that don't know, an inter-squad game um, is the, his team, so his Canisius team, just split up into two teams playing each other. So um, so we watched that uh, We watched that game yesterday. Uh, we thought today's uh, scrimmage was going to be canceled, but it ended up going off at 11. Um, and then they actually stopped. I think it was about the sixth inning um, in a rain out. Um, pouring rain, pouring yeah. rain. Today was not inner squad. Today they were actually Today playing. They were playing a team on, from Ontario, Ontario, from Canada. But Justin wasn't playing because he pitched yesterday. Um, today they had uh, most of their freshman boys in playing uh, pitching to get experience of pitching against uh, other teams. So, uh, so yeah. So we got to watch um, the inter squad game yesterday um which today was, they won 12-3 yes they won 12-3 but in the sixth inning i don't know how that works i mean i don't know how they it's count that it's not really a game not that really matters game, it's just a scrimmage but um you know for us we're five hours away from buffalo and when we found out justin was pitching yesterday or before we left we you know immediately said let's hop in the car and uh and go when we get back so you know we don't want to miss him pitching whenever we can right we, we want right. to be there when we can so it was worth the six hour drive went out to dinner with him last night um got to catch up for a little bit and um so that was really nice it looks like there is an accident so we are yep. slowing down here um and yeah so so that was really nice to be out to dinner with him uh, it was a quick night uh we were tired we had been traveling all day so it was a quick night and um we, we saw slept him. in today we slept in we never sleep in we slept in, then we got up, we worked out, you ran, I went to the gym, and... Um, and our sleeping is 8 a.m., though. Yeah. It's our version of sleeping in. <laughs> that's at true. 8.30. <laughs> that's, we that's laugh when our staff says, oh, we didn't get out of bed till 11, 12, and I'm like, oh, my gosh. And they're like, that's early. I'm like, oh, boy. But, um, oh, uh, Courtney is calling me, so I'm not sure why, but I'll call her right back. Um, you can answer it. Oh, let answer. me answer it. Hi, Court. What's up? We're doing a Facebook Live. What's the matter? Um, I'm not sure. I'll call you right back. Okay. All right. Bye. Um, so, yeah, she's asking, actually, if we have another Chardonnay. So, I have to uh, get back to her. I'm pretty sure we have a, a new Chardonnay that is going on our list, unless they've gone through lots of Chardonnay. You use the so. flower one from you know, the flower one. I don't know what the flower one is, but we'll talk about it when we're finished because I'm not sure. Okay. Um, you can, you go by labels. I sometimes can't do that. I need yeah. to know what the name of it is. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so, so yeah, we're on our way back from Buffalo. So we'll be uh, back at the restaurant um, shortly. And um, yeah, we're, we're actually, what was the name of this again? Um, oh, we're not, we're we not, can't, we, we can't, can't stop. stop so, so yeah, so the Finger Lakes are right here. We just drove by Cuca Lake. 
Seneca Lake, and now Cayuga. We just drove by three lakes, exit for three lakes, and we can't stop. No, we can't. We, we can't stop. Back. And usually we love to stop and say hello. Um, not even really just... But we could stop. We're just choosing not to stop. <laughs> we're, we, could, we're, we could stop, but we're kind of in a... You know, we want to get, get back. back. Uh, we've been gone the last week, and um, we, we want to get back and get unpacked and just get ready for the week. we got a lot going on. This next week, we have some catering stuff going on, and um, we don't yep. have a wine dinner tomorrow night. We'll have a wine dinner next Monday, the 11th, um, at 6.30 four wines in a dish for $29. That won't be tomorrow, but that'll be October 11th. And we have a beer dinner the week after, so. So the neat thing about Mexico, where it we went, the Valle de Guadalupe and the Baja, Northern Baja, was that the wine culture is really strong there, right? That's why we went there. But you eat, like, a lot of, a lot of types of Mexican food you don't associate wine with. When you go to a Mexican restaurant, a lot of times they really don't have a good wine list or a wine list at all, or anything that's just, a, it's an afterthought. There, wine is the focal point of all the food. It I mean, really that, I mean, it's, yeah, of course they have tequila, of course they have mezcal, and they make cocktails, and, and there was very little beer, good craft beer, yes, but very little, like, I don't think we saw Corona once. No. I, like, still, like, light Mexican beer and like that. even in San Diego, the restaurant that we went, which was totally not planned, had... Valle de Guadalupe wines, wines yeah. on their list. So, yeah. so it, it is a little bit outside of Mexico. It's only an hour and a half. But outside they the valley. Have, but the, outside, of, sorry, outside of San Diego. Um, but we had they had wine from Mexico on yes. their list, which we, we found really cool. And we didn't even know. Uh, it was just a friend um, recommended this restaurant, and we just went there. So. Right. So, yeah, so the culture down there, the food scene, the restaurants... It's the, the main drink is really wine in that area. It's and um, so wine region, right? it's a wine region. Wine region and, and the other stuff. I don't think it's I don't think it's a well known wine region in our country. It's not. I think they just know about it in Mexico and it, obviously in that in that. So what we learned California. was what we learned was we thought we were just going to the Valle de Guadalupe, the Guadalupe Valley. Right. We learned that there's actually five or so valleys in that region that are one valley after another after another after another that, wine region. that grow wine but the Valle de Guadalupe grapes. the grow grapes that grow grapes and make wine but the Valle de Guadalupe is where the is where the hotels are the resorts is where people go visit and have like their Napa Valley experience of the wine world so um, but that whole region down there I mean anywhere you go it was wine wine is wine was the main alcoholic beverage consumed with food. And there are no regulations down there in terms of what grapes you can use to, right. to make wines. And so there are, what, like 140 different... Um, the one vineyard alone, Magione, Magione grows 114 grape varietals. Which is crazy, right? So, like, yes. That's a lot of different grapes. A lot of different wines. So when we say that there's no regulations, of course there's regulations as far as sanitation and things like that. Right. But there's no law saying, okay, if you're making wine here... You must you grow this grape, use. that grape, and that right. grape, like Italy, France, and Spain, and Germany have very strict regulations of the grapes you can specifically grow there. And the reason why is those those areas are hundreds of years old. New York is only 50 years old. California is, what, 175 years old in the wine region, right? So these wine regions are, are, are different as far as because the age of the region has established more government controls of what they can actually produce. However... The wine region down there, the oldest winery in North America is there, 1597. Um, the Spaniards came in and brought their wine culture. Um, Cortez came in, they brought their wine culture, they brought grapes, and they planted vineyards. So for them, it's been 400 years of wine with food. So that's part of the reason why it's not really beer and other things, it's wine. It's been a wine culture, and there's lots of part of Mexico that are a wine culture as opposed to beer first because again you walk into a Mexican restaurant and it's all about the Coronas it's all about the San Miguel's it's all about the beers with the food there it's about the wine with the food so that was really interesting that was you know just like totally different than what we're used to totally different than what we're used to in the United States and, so and the Mexican food is so different too like just so very very, very different. different they make tacos and tostadas out of everything everything and you know so even like sometimes the tacos are just like just roasted lamb and the taco shell, and that's it. And or and with consomme, with lamb broth, 
you saw the one lamp come out. No other sides, no sour cream, no Monterey Jack. No, no it's just lamb, slow roasted oven or uh, ground baked in uh, lamb baked in the ground. Tortillas and the lamb consomme, and that was that was for breakfast at one that place. We saw that, place, yes. right? So, um, lots of octopus in that region. Baja, Baja is known for the fish. In lots fact, of shrimp, lots of um, octopus. lobster. Lobster was was very prevalent. Very there. predominant. Yes. Extremely predominant. And we tried a couple of things, but um, you know, most of the things we liked, right? I mean, there weren't very there were very few things that we didn't really care for. You didn't try the crickets. No, I did not. Try I the tried crickets. the crickets because they put it on the plate and. They brought it out and they thought, you know, they were trying to take care of us for dinner. They and did take care of us for dinner. The eggplant thing. The eggplant thing. Oh, yeah. We had at Punta Moro. Right. It was not what you were expecting. It was not what I was expecting. It, it was, was more of a salad, and so I expected salad. And it was more eggplant more caviar. Yeah, and I, I didn't really care about it. Which for is that. more French in style, eggplant caviar. I'm not a big fan of that because it gives me geographic tongue. But I didn't know what it was, so, so I, I ordered it to try it, right? It yeah. sounded interesting. The crickets we did not order. The chef just food. sent that out. Yes. The chef sent out us a bunch of food to try, and lo and behold, there was crickets with this, what appeared to be this string cheese from Oaxaca. So it was a Oaxacan dish. Uh, the string cheese, um, guacamole, and crickets, which tasted like crispy anchovies. That didn't taste it was salted. That. It was that's really what it tasted like. And that you were supposed to make a taco out of that. Yes. That's what you're supposed to make. So you just skipped the crickets. I did. I tried it to be nice and not something I would eat or order. But I didn't want to say no. They sent it out. Right. So, so, so thanks everybody for watching us. We appreciate you watching. Um, Aroma Time is open. Uh, they have been open since three o'clock. I don't know if they're sitting outside in the garden or inside. I'm going to assume it's inside today. Uh, due to the weather, but I'm not 100% sure. What? This isn't our turn, is it? Um, I don't know. I don't think so, but I guess I should check it out before we get there. That was our exit, huh? That was our exit. That was our exit. <laughs> <laughs> in 6.5 miles, All right, take exit 36 um. to merge onto I-81 toward Binghamton. <laughs> okay, well, we're going to I-81 toward Binghamton. <laughs> that was our exit. Uh, we're not paying attention. The steering wheel is on the wrong side of the car. Thanks, Mike. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, uh, so thanks, everybody, for watching us. We appreciate it. Tonight is our last night of $9.99 uh, special um, of barbecue chicken with potato salad and coleslaw. Uh, Courtney is behind the bar. She's making drinks tonight. We're gonna come back um, shortly and we are going to, uh, I think we're gonna try to make some mezcal margaritas. Um, or cocktails. Point, or cocktails. And, yeah. So if anybody wants to come in and try some cocktails with us. Um, you know, now we have a totally different, uh, uh, our mind is open to many different things. We're talking about putting some tacos on the menu. Yeah, I think, um, I think we should put like, an octopus taco on the menu, something fun. or a lamb taco, something like that. I think should go on our menu or tostada, um, and I think really ceviche should have some ceviche dish at some point. At some point, yeah. Yeah. So, but yeah, I'm, I would really want to explore. Our mind just got so opened up with all the different types of tacos. And that's normally what happens when we go away. And right. That's, that's part of why we go travel, right? go away. Yeah. Is to think outside the box, think think other ways. We're definitely planning a Mexican wine trip. Uh, for um, 2022 for yep. next year and um, we'd love for you to travel with us in the meantime we're going to be doing a wine trip to the Finger Lakes November 5th through the 7th um, that trip there are still some seats left if you are wanting to travel with us uh, please give us a call right away um, I have to start um, um, finalizing, uh, finalizing the plans so if you have not booked with us yet to go to the Finger Lakes we'd love for you to join us this is one of the lakes here. This probably is Skinny Atlas, actually. I think this is Skinny Atlas. No, this is Syracuse. Yeah, Syracuse, Skinny Atlas. Yeah. I so know. I'm going to tell you, this is Onondaga Lake. Onondaga Lake, okay. Which I think is, yeah. So um, just uh, Onondaga Lake, yes. So um, we'll be hitting 81 here in a moment. And um, let's see, what else do you want to talk about, Marcus? Anything else? So we definitely are going to bring in some more Mexican wines. Yes. Um, the last vineyard we went to specialized in all French varietals. Most of the vineyards specialized in mixing French and and Italian, um, Italian varietals. And of course, they had Cabernet. Cabernet is a French varietal, but 
very well known in America, especially well, in California. Vedra. Vedra. What else was there? Um, Petit for dough. Petit for dough, yes. Grenache or Sinsol? I don't remember. There was, it was all, it was, and they were. He was like, nope, no Italian varietals here. He's like all French. Okay. Um, and a lot of the wineries down there had Nebbiolo, a lot which is had, a French, uh, which is an Italian an Italian varietal. Variety. Nebbiolo, which makes Barolo. Nebbiolo is like their most well-known grape but in that very, region. it's very, it's much heavier than, uh, you know, than, than the Italian. The Italian, yep. Yes. Yep. So, yeah, if you want to check out, I mean, we're going to probably bring in some new wines this week. Uh, we'd love for you to check them out, come taste them. Um, Super high quality. Yes. Not cheap. You know, whenever you come to the restaurant, if you ever need a recommendation on a wine, because um, we go to different regions, right? We try a lot of different things. New York wines, Mexican wines. Marcus and I would be happy to uh, help you make a choice to uh, fit your palate. So yeah. that's why they make so many different wines. To uh, So, yeah, just because people might think, oh, Mexico things are cheap. The wines they're not are cheap. not inexpensive. No. Uh, not inexpensive at all, but they're amazing high miles, quality. Take exit 36 to merge onto I-81 toward Binghamton. Good. Yeah. So, yeah, the, the wines are super high quality, amazing. Um, the region there is so new, uh, like, not, I don't say the region is new, a lot of the wineries, lot of the wineries are, are new. new, that they don't have 15-year-old vintages. Like, we visited one winery that was 23 years old, that was probably the oldest one, right? Adobe Guadalupe. Yeah, most of the other ones were... Were 10 years like old, eight, 8 years old. 8 to, eight to 12. 12, 12 years old. 8 to 12, yeah. So the boom down there, even though they've been growing grapes for hundreds of years, and the vintage there's been one winery... Uh, Seto, right? Seto, Seto makes half of the half of the valley's $2 wine. Million dollar, uh, two, two million bottle production. Uh, Seto makes what? One million. One million. Bottles? One million. Either two million bottles in that region they make. Now, um, it was us last year. Um, so RV with a flat tire. So Seto makes one million out of the two million bottles. They used to make one million out of the million and a half. They used to make one million out of the million and a quarter. So they used to be the big boys. They've been there 50 years, 48 years or something, Seto. And so if you've had Mexican wine in the past, chances are you've had Seto. And chances are it was probably not good. Uh, Seto was known as an inexpensive producer. Uh, the quality wasn't there. Seto does make some very nice wines now. But they also still have some wines that are lower on the scale to meet the price points of right. the locals down there and coming into the American market. Uh, for less inexpensive wine. So Seto covers the whole range. And we've tasted Seto wines in New York before, and we even had their Nebbiolo on before, uh, which we sold with very great success for Nebbiolo, and it was very, 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 very good. Now that we've been to the region, we can really understand um, the wineries. Uh, I think we met almost every owner. We definitely met every winemaker. Yes. Um, we almost met, I think, almost every single owner. Um, of the wineries. Uh, uh, Bruma would have been the only exception, but we met Lulu, the winemaker. Bruma's owned by eight gentlemen from Mexico City. Um, some of them were there that day in the, in the room with us. Uh, they were having a meeting. They were calling an associates meeting, really the owner's meeting. They and were Lulu, drinking. They were drinking. <laughs> and Lulu was there with them, the winemaker. She stopped in and sat with us and talked to us. Maybe Madeira 5. I don't think we met the owners. We did not meet the Madeira owners, which is five owners. Mm -hmm. But they were the... They were one of the oldest wineries in the, the city of Ensenada oh. in the warehouse district. So they're the kind of pioneers in that area. But they only made, what, 10,000 bottles? I, yeah, I can't remember. So, yeah, something like that. South. South, yeah. Make sure we don't make any mistakes Maybe here. South, perfect. So, um, anything else, Jamie? I think that's it. I think we covered a lot. So, thanks for watching. Do we have any questions about Mexico? Yeah, Questions. Somebody asked the other day, well, why, why, why are you guys going to Mexico for a wine trip? Um, part of the reason is, as far as a group trip is, because we really want to show people uh, those wines down there, that wine region. It's very accessible, um, especially with the travel restrictions right now. It's very accessible to go across the border. It took us a long time to get back over. Now, we did get COVID tested on our way back 72 hours prior because we were told, oh, yeah, you need a COVID test, you need a COVID test. Nobody checked anything. Um, but we did it. But we did it anyway. And we didn't know. And we didn't want to get stuck on the border and saying, where's your COVID test? So some people said, no, you don't need it. And other people said, oh, no, you absolutely need it. 100% need it. So, um, But it's easy for Americans to travel into Mexico. And I have to say, 
the re- the regulations there are very strict. All the restaurants, all the hotels. I mean, they were they they have they have mats for like feet even when you walk in to sanitize your feet. The one place we got into the house vans of the one resort we're at, and they sprayed our feet down. Like so, they're very strict as far as the regulations. Even in the stores we were at in Ensenada, the one guy was like, you know, your masks need to be on. The inspectors are on this block right now, walking around inspecting, make sure everybody has their masks on. And so, I would probably say they're stricter as far as enforcing masks, hand washing, um, sanitation in general. And that's their government. Almost every place we went into, they actually um, put sanitizer on our hands. They did. They were there with sanitizer to put on your hands. So, um, so it's accessible to get into. And very safe. Everywhere we went, we felt very safe. safe so. Very safe. People talk about all oh, the cartels and this and that, and that's that's for the people who own big businesses down there. Those are for you know the people like I said the other day, like the judges, the attorneys that um, prosecute people. That are you know they, they, it's revenge and it's things like that and you know if you're in the avocado district which is way south on the mainland um, you know they do go after the owners they hold them for ransom because they have so much land and they hold so much of the avocado value that it's a, that's what it's about and so the, the avocado farmers have their own cartels to fight the other cartels to then have more cartels to you know it's their own sort of police force and security. Uh, so that's nothing like where we were at all. Where we are was is is a very um, beautiful part of Mexico. It is not as tourist as you would think, but it's very safe. Um, and the tourist there is like once you get onto the properties we were at, like you're on the you're on these resorts, you're on these properties, and they're magnificent. And most wineries had. Um Security gates. security gates. Every single winery and restaurant you go, we went into, you pull up to a security, they check to see who you are, and they let you through to go to your reservation. Yes. So every single one has gated security. Um, just because I think it's just part of what people like to see down there um, as far as, you know, just as far as security. Well, safety. 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 Yeah. You want to feel safe yeah. when you travel. The winery owners were like, you have nothing to worry about. It's, this is all just formality. People like to see this. They like to know, you know, that, that that there's some sort of protection here or nobody can just pull onto the property. And we like to know. And some were very strict, like Bruma, extremely strict about, you know, who they let on the property. And, um, you know, Bruma's a big winery. Mel Gibson was there a couple weeks before, the famous boxer uh, from Mexico. I don't know his name. Everyone was talking about, was talking about the boxer that was there. Um, and then Mel Gibson was somewhere else. I think he was at the place we stayed at, right? Yeah. Uh- yeah, he played at El, played at El Cielo. They were talking about Mel Gibson there as well. Or so he, he must, came to the winery there or something. He like must have stayed at the wi- at our winery we stayed at and then went to Bruma as well. So, um, so that's it. Any, anybody have any questions? I don't know if you can see if, I don't know if you can see No, there's there. no questions. No, okay. No. Well, thank right. you everybody for watching. We appreciate it. If you were watching live, put hashtag live. If you're watching on the replay, hashtag replay. Give, give, us, give us a thumbs up. So that we, we know you were here. Yep. Make sure and you follow us on Instagram. Um, Aroma Time, Aroma Time Farm to Table. And stay tuned for my Facebook Lives that will be back tomorrow. So with more mezcal. With more mezcal. Uh, have a great night, everybody, and we'll see you soon.